Let's talk about spatial joins in QGIS 3. So spatial join is going to be a join that adds attributes to one of your spatial layers by looking at another spatial layer. Usually what you're doing is you're looking at a polygon layer and you're trying to find all of the features from the other layer that fall within that polygon layer and you're doing some kind of summarization based on the data on the other layer. Um, so frequently this is with points and polygons. Um, in another video I talk about counting the number of points in polygons, but sometimes you want more information than just the count of the points in polygons. Sometimes you want to know um, some of the information from those other features. So for example, we're looking at our polygons are a buffer around the bike lanes in New York City, and the points are collisions. And if I look at the attribute table for the collisions, there's more information here than just um, when it happened. There's also um, the number of injuries the, the name of the column got cut off when I made this a shapefile, but this is the number of injuries. And I think I want to summarize that. Maybe I want to see for each uh, segment of the buffer around the bike lanes, I want to see the total number of injuries, All right? So, so I can use a spatial join to do this kind of thing. So often you're looking for some kind of numeric column that you can do something with when you're doing this kind of spatial join. So you might be tempted to go up to vector and data management tools, join attributes by location, and what this does is it mostly is good for um, joining to spatial layers when you only want the information from one of the features inside the other one. But in our case, we want to do a summary. Uh, so the summary is in a separate place. The name is almost identical. It's join attributes by location. And I'll search for it in the bottom left. As you can see, there's join attributes by location. Uh, which is the one we were just looking at, and then there's one with summary in parentheses. That's the one we want. So the input layer is the layer that will have more information on it when we're done. So I want the bike route buffers to have more information on them about the collisions. Um, for the most part, you'll often want to just stick with intersects. So is the collision inside the bike route buffer. And then you have to pick fields to summarize. So like I was saying, I want to see the total number of injuries. So I want to pick that field in fields to summarize. Oh, I didn't see that it opened there. Uh, so you check all of the fields that you want to summarize. I'm just going with number of. Uh, injuries is what that is, and then you pick the calculations you want to do on that. So I think um, maybe you want min and max, um, but really I want the sum, uh, the total number. If you had other information, you might want to find the average. What's the average? Uh, average number of injuries maybe isn't as interesting here. Um, I think I just want the total, but there are other options in here. Okay, and then I'm going to run this, and we'll have, when this completes, we will have a uh, new layer of the bike route buffers, and each feature in the bike route buffers Okay, so this is taking a few minutes to run because it's a lot of buffers and a lot of data. So I will continue once it runs. Okay, so 
I just finished doing the spatial join. And if we open up the attribute table on the joined layer, the resulting layer, you'll see it's got the same attributes as the buffered pike rats that we started with, but all the way over in the right should be the um, the new columns created by the spatial join. So you'll see each column name will start with the name of the column from the other layer, so the collisions, number of, it's number of injuries, and then the operation that it did, so min, max, and if I scroll over the rest of the way, sum, so the total, the sum of injuries due to collisions within the buffer around these bike routes. Okay. So now I might do some kind of graduated style based on the number of injuries. That might be interesting to look at. So if I turn off the points for now and the other bike routes, so you'll see that some of the bike routes are not showing up because they had uh, zero. They didn't join, but so if I choose any one of these, should see the number of injuries is seven there, for example. So, so it's kind of hard to see the way it is. Change the symbol. I'm just trying to make it so I can better see the the fills themselves. Okay, so you can see at a glance um, the bike routes with more injuries versus fewer injuries. So now our smallest bucket is zero to one, so zero or one injuries in this area but then many injuries along this bike route. And if I turn on the other bike routes, you can see the gaps uh, where there were zero. Uh, for example, in Prospect Park, it looks like either there are no recorded injuries or maybe there's something going on with the way the data is collected where um, if, say, a collision happens in this area, maybe it gets recorded over here. I'm not totally sure um, based on looking at the data. But yeah, so hopefully you can imagine um, other, other situations where a spatial join might be useful for for summarizing your data on a polygon or say a buffer around a polygon in this case, it's a buffer around the bike routes. And again, um, that is the best way to get to that is to search down in the bottom left for a join attributes by location and summary in parentheses. All right. Hope that helps.